guys, it's Gretchen, and welcome back to my channel. All right, it is that time of the month again where I answer your body mod questions. These questions all come from either Instagram where people ask their questions when I put up a little bubble on Instagram stories, or they can leave them in the comments like if you want your question featured in November's body mod Q&A, you can leave them in the comment section below. But before I get started with today's video, I do want to give a big thank you to Anna Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Anna Luisa is a sustainable jewelry company that uses only the best noble metals for their jewelry. They are a carbon neutral company, which means that they offset their carbon emission. For all the CO2 they produce in all aspects of their company, they are able to counterbalance it with oxygen. They are a luxury jewelry brand, but there are no luxury brand markups on prices. There's seriously something for everybody from Anna Luisa. So when they first reached out to me and I started browsing their website, I immediately fell in love with what I was seeing. Their prices are simple, yet simply stunning. So I am gonna show you all the pieces that they sent over to me, which I'm very excited about because two of them are earrings. Now I know what you're thinking. Gretchen, you have stretched ears. How can you wear any ear jewelry other than plugs and tunnels. And to that I say you can most definitely still wear ear jewelry such as hoops. Personally, I love the look of stretched ears and like feeding hoops through them. So like with tunnels, you can put hoops through them. And these pieces that Anna Luisa sent me are ones that can be worn on their own or you can wear them up with other pieces. Anna Luisa sends their jewelry over in these really cute velvet packaging. The first one I'm gonna show you is called the Riviera. The main reason why I picked this this set is because of the moonstones directly in the center of the jewelry. So my nostril piercings are both moonstones. So when I saw this one and saw the moonstones in the center, I was like, ooh, that'll probably look really good with my nostril piercings. So of course I had to try this one. I also really love the design that the moonstones are set in. They kind of like have a little starburst and these retail for $75. Next is called the Sia. These are really unique because they're like safety pin style earrings. So the Sia, it's still very simple, which I like. Simple, dainty, but it's also a little unique compared to just regular hoops. Think of it as giving you a chic punk vibe, which is just my aesthetic. And these retail for $59. And the final piece that they sent over is this gorgeous chain necklace. It's called the Yousef. I absolutely love the look of it, but the main thing that I like about this one, other than the fact that you could easily wear this on its own or stack it with other jewelry, which I intend to do, is that there is a little engraving on there that says be you, which is something that I have struggled with. And I think that's such an important message. Be you, don't be someone else. Don't try to be someone else to impress someone. Be you wholeheartedly. And this necklace retails for $59. Also with earrings, when you have stretched ears, you can also just take your plugs tunnels out and just put the hoops in. And that's a really unique look as well. I personally like it. I like it whether it's through tunnels or whether I just take the tunnels out and put the hoops in. So thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. Be sure to check them out. Their website is in the description below. And if you use the code GO10 at checkout, you can receive 10% off your order in case you find anything that you love. All right, let's get into some body mod questions. Ariadna asks, is it normal? for a forward helix to be pierced with a curved barbell. Can I change it for a straight barbell when I downsize? I don't think I've ever, I mean, I'm not gonna say I haven't heard of a curved barbell being used in it. I just not sure it's standard. If it's something that you personally are not comfortable with and it's still too early to change it out, you could go back to your piercer and be like, hey, can we swap this out for different jewelry? I just don't like this kind or whatever. But if it's healed enough for you to change it out, then go ahead and change it out yourself. But yeah, if it's still too early, go back to your piercer. Kezi asks, do you want any more tattoos? Absolutely. Diadne asks, when you got your tragus pierced, how long was it before you could wear AirPods? I think I waited until at least six months before I tried AirPods. I probably could have done it a whole lot sooner, but because I didn't want to irritate anything, I waited until at least six months. Until that point, I used like over the ear headphones, which is still my preferred headphone type. Over the ear headphones are way chunkier and take up way more space than AirPods do. So that's the only reason why I still use AirPods, but I think I waited at least six months just to make sure. Natalia asks, I want to get a forward helix, but I'm not sure as I wear both glasses and masks. Is it safe to get it done anyways? Or do you think I should wait until there's a vaccine and mask days are behind us? So I have 
a forward helix and I wear glasses. I have contacts in right now, just so you all don't have to deal with a glare on my glasses when I film, but I wear glasses and I also wear masks as everyone should. I haven't noticed too much of an issue. Yes, sometimes the mask will get caught on it, but I am more aware of it. So I just take off the mask slowly. Once the mask is on, once the glasses are on, never bothers it, but it's just like taking the mask on and off, more so off than putting it on. Glasses I've never had an issue with. It's the mask that definitely sometimes causes an issue, but even then it's just kind of being aware that it's there. But to answer your question, go ahead and get it done. If you feel like you can remember that it's there and then when you're putting those things on and taking them off that you are careful, you should be fine. Tim asks, I used to have an industrial bar in my left ear back in 2016 and it got ripped out on one end and the other side was still in when I woke up. Would it be difficult to get a forward helix in the spot where my scar is from the piercing? First of all, I'm so sorry that you had that experience. That sounds horrible. You can always get re-pierced in a spot that has a scar, but you just need to be made aware that it could be more painful. It may not end up healing and you just may just have issues with it all the way around. So it's just making sure that you're aware of those potential issues. But if it's like healed up and everything and it's just a scar there, you should be fine to get it done. Just also let your piercer know, be like, hey, I used to have something there. There may be scar tissue. Jenny asks, I got my double helix pierced five months ago. It was pierced fine and I clean it two times a day. I have weird bumps on the back of both of them. I tried everything to get rid of them and they won't go away. They're not painful or anything, but annoying. I have to put half inch barbells in them because the bumps are so large and they only happen on my left ear, not my right. Any tips? Should I get it shot at a dermatologist? I wanted to know your tip before I did so. The first thing you need to do is kind of determine what kind of bumps they are. There are so many different kinds of piercing bumps that you need to know which one you're dealing with before you take a course of action. I personally would go seek out your piercer first or a piercer that you trust and be like, yo, what is this? What are your thoughts on this? Do you do you have any advice? Could be the jewelry. You could be allergic to it. Maybe you're over cleaning it. It's getting irritated somehow. Go to a piercer. They are the professional. They will better be able to like direct you in the path to go. For me, when I had a piercing bump and I went to a dermatologist, it was because I was going to a dermatologist about something else. And then while I was there, I was just like, hey, what are your thoughts on this? I didn't seek out a dermatologist just because of a bump. Go to your piercer first and ask their thoughts and they should be able to guide you in a better direction. Color Girl 101 asks, I just got my tragus and helix pierced this past week. I know you have to downsize the bar at some point after six weeks, but the piercer didn't tell me themselves or tell me to come back and I didn't think to ask while I was there. Can I just order smaller jewelry and downsize it myself? Would it be okay to switch the helix to a hoop for downsizing? So I personally am not a fan of hoops in piercings that are still healing. So I am gonna personally say no to hoops. However, it's all up to personal preference. If you feel like you can change it out yourself, you can go ahead and downsize. Just make sure you're getting quality jewelry. But if you don't feel like you're able to do it yourself, go back to your piercer and have them do it. But yes, you can downsize after about six weeks. Just after that point, don't mess with it. Don't change it out. Don't continue to change it out. I personally don't like hoops in piercings that are still healing. And at six weeks, it would still be healing. So do with that what you will. Linda asks, I got my upper helix recently. The jewelry sits at almost a 45 degree angle. I did read a little online that swelling can change the angle the jewelry sits at while healing. And I know cartilage is crazy to heal, but is it okay for it to be that crooked or did they pierce it crooked? My follow up question would be is if it was pierced crooked, how long would I have to wait to get that redone if I take it out. One of my double helix piercings over here is actually pierced crooked. It's the bottom one and that's why I always have problems with the bottom one. It's because it actually is also pierced crooked. I'm trying to remember how it's angled. I think it goes up a little bit. It's finally happy and I got that done in December of 2017. No, December 2016. One of those Decembers. It's been several years since I got it done and it's just now getting happy. Taking it out and re-piercing it is all up to you. It can be fine pierced at an angle. It can be. It just may take a bit to get to a happy place. Like seriously, this is the first time in forever since mine have been happy. And even then it'll sometimes just be like,
So you just kind of have to be aware of that, that it's more susceptible to like flare ups. But if you are totally fine with that, then you should be okay. But if you would like to give it another shot, then take it out, let it heal and then try again. But like make sure it's healed. Lisa asks, do the piercings in one ear need to be healed before piercing the other ear? For me, it depends on what kind of a sleeper you are. Are you a back sleeper? Are you a stomach sleeper? Are you a side sleeper? So if you're a side sleeper and you get your left ear pierced, you should be sleeping on your right side. If this is still not healed yet, you should not be getting anything pierced over here until this side is healed so that when you want this side pierced, you can go back to sleeping on this side. So that's always like my little justification for getting pierced on either side shortly after one another is uh, determining what kind of sleeper you are. And even then you can either get a travel pillow or a donut pillow and then put your ear in it while you're asleep if you're a side sleeper. And then that way it takes the pressure off of it so you're not constantly irritating it. What kind of a sleeper are you? That's really gonna be your deciding factor on that. If you're a back sleeper, then you don't have to worry too much. Stomach sleeper, you're still gonna end up on an ear. It's Amanda J asks, how long did you wait between stretches? I typically waited five to six weeks for most of them. I think the smaller ones I did like four weeks, but then once I started getting to bigger sizes, it was five to six weeks. Carla Emma X asks, how do you feel about piercing scars, especially facial piercings? I personally don't have a problem with scars of any kind. Piercing scars are just regular old scars in general. I have several scars on my stomach, whether it's from my botched belly button piercing or my weight loss surgery. For scars, I always recommend using bio oil on them and that actually diminishes the appearance of scars and is also pretty good for your skin. I don't even like think about scars just because I know they can diminish over time. You can cover them up. They're usually not too in your face. And even then just use bio oil to help diminish the appearance of them. Holly Andres asks, do your piercings get dry, crusty when the weather gets cooler? How do you fix prevent it? I am gonna go back to bio oil. Bio oil is like the cure all for everything. I have been using bio oil on my second tragus over here. This is the second one I got done. It like gets dry all the time for whatever reason. Actually this ear in general is just way drier than this one. Bio oil saves the day on that. I just take a Q-tip, get some bio oil on it, just go around it. Bam, it really helps. Lane Holiday asks, if you were to change up your jewelry theme right now, what would you change it to? So gold, opal, I would change it to an all black theme. I love the appearance of like black jewelry, just like the black metal. I think it's really cool looking, especially for spooky season. That's what I would change it to right now, but I don't have the funds for it. So that's why we're not gonna change it. And also I don't trust myself to change like my Dath, Doth, Pearson, or even my Forward Helix. So if I'm gonna change my jewelry, I want it to all be cohesive, not just 80%. My mom, speaking of all opal jewelry, my mom has all opal in her. Pearsons. Ronald Odalima asks, when will you stretch your second holes? When I can find my stretching kit again. Pretty much after I stretch my ears with my stretching kit, I would just toss things to the side and now I don't know where anything is. So I might have to order a second stretching kit or I just might order glass pieces to do dead stretching. Pretty much the only reason why I haven't started on them yet. MVRCIII asks, do you think you should avoid working out when initially getting a piercing? I think it depends on the piercing. If you're getting like your navel done or like anything like down, like where you would sweat normally, I would reconsider like working out or like just do different kinds of workouts. But things like here up, you should be okay unless you wear over the ear headphones or something like that, then maybe consider it. Facial wise, you should be good. Ear wise, depends on your kind of headphones. Here down, because you sweat more in these areas, I would definitely just be cautious of it. So if you have to wear a sports bra and you get your nipples done, be very careful about taking that on and off. You gotta kind of think about what kind of workouts you're gonna be doing, how much you typically sweat when you work out, things of that nature. And then always just make sure that you're cleaning up after yourself. Don't sweat and then not clean up. If you're sweating and sweat gets into your new navel piercing and you didn't clean it off or anything, ew. That's gross. So I think it depends on your kind of workout, the piercing in question, and like things that you wear while you work out. Rin1601 asks, what's the difference between a helix piercing and an outer cartilage piercing? Excellent question. A helix piercing is anything that's in the upper cartilage area, not below, so conch technically is not a helix piercing. So things up here in this general region, so like a forward helix is a helix piercing. 
things up here are helix piercings. An outer cartilage piercing is anything that's on this outer side. That's the main difference. Our helix piercings are just in the upper part. And then outer cartilage piercings are on the outer side. So like a forward helix would technically not be an outer cartilage piercing. Things out here are. Though I do wonder, would a forward helix be considered an outer one? Because it is on the outer part of your ear structure. I don't know. And the final question comes from mommy of three. Do you still plan on getting your labray pierced? Would you ever consider a vertical labray? I love the look of a vertical labray. I just don't want it to go through my lip. It's really cute and everything. I just don't want something through my lip. Yes, I still plan on getting my labray done, but I just got away from my piercing shop to do oral piercings again because they still aren't which I get totally understand but I do plan on it love the look of a vertical labray I just don't let something through my lip so that is it for October's body mods Q&A again if you want to ask a question for November leave them in the comments below or follow me on Instagram and wait for me to post a little question thing up in my stories and you can ask it that way. Again, thank you to Anna Louisa for sponsoring today's video. You can check out the link to their website. It is in the description below. Again, if you find something that you truly love and you'd like to purchase something from them, use the code GO10 for 10% off your order. But that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big ol' thumbs up. Go on down there and hit that subscribe button, wherever it may be, because I don't know. Even though I do, this is just my stick now. Also hit that notification bell in case you want to know when I upload and in case YouTube wants to let you know when I upload because I would really appreciate it. And until next time, bye guys. Mm -hmm.